Hey, what's going on guys? In today's video, we'll be addressing the fundamentals of what makes up a great chest workout. We'll be taking a look at both free weight, compound barbell type movements, and also comparing that against the benefits and safety of something like this, the workbench leveraging. We'll also be including presses, flies, and a lot of mobility movements so that we can ensure both the longevity of our joints as well as focusing on hypertrophy in the muscle. With that being said, we first need to focus on a great stability and mobility warm up for the chest. And to get started on that, we're gonna use some resistance bands. So the first movement that we're gonna be focusing on is the barbell bench press. Literally the gold standard when it comes to chest. And we're gonna use a flat bench and warm up first with the barbell. Even though we've warmed up the joints with some mobility exercises, we still need to warm up the muscles with some blood by progressively increasing the weight until we get to our working set. We usually do that over about two sets. So I'm gonna start with just the bar, familiarize myself with the movement, and we'll start to add some weight up to that eighth or 10th rep. Now yes, it's gonna be a little tricky to then get out from under the bench, but at least the bar will be supported. Okay, with that being said, let's get some weight on and start to progressively increase the weight up over three or four working sets, ranging from 12 to eight reps, with our heaviest weight at that third or fourth set, and we can go all out achieving those eight reps until we get muscle failure. Now for me, at my age, it's not about how much weight you can lift. It's all about volume and technique. So I may not be lifting as much weight as I once did, but still 225 pounds, including the bar for eight to 10 reps, is enough to focus on hypertrophy in the muscle. In fact, more than enough. This is sort of my failure weight. So the goal here is to achieve between eight to 10 reps, knowing that if I do hit failure, I've got these safety bars in support. Let's get to it. Okay, so I reached failure, but as you can see, I needed to leave the weight on those safety supports, which leaves us with the obvious question, if we're training alone with free weights, it's that much harder to reach failure because we've got the danger of the bar falling on us and often much harder to then get the weight back up and rack it at the top. So what do we do? Well, as you can see, one option is to use the safety bars, but obviously that free weight is coming down and is gonna end up on there if we're unable to push back up muscle failure. One of the main benefits of working with something like the workbench Levergym from Powertech is you've got this fixed range of motion and all of these adjustable safety stops and the fact that we can 
independently focus on each arm separately. So now that I've focused on a free weight, I'm gonna compare that sensation in my chest with using the lever gym. And for this one, I'll focus more on an incline to focus on the upper region of the pecs. I'm already warmed up, let's get some weight on and get started on our first set. A fairly easy 12 reps compared to eight failing on that. And when we look at the actual weights that we're lifting, the mechanism for the arms itself weighs just over 30 pounds. Compare that to a standard barbell, 45 pounds, plus our 245s. So we're very closely matched to the same weight on the barbell to what we've got here on the lever arms. The main difference is because of the fulcrum at the back doesn't mean that we're lifting a true 225 pounds. In fact, we've got to take about 20% off of that. So we're actually lifting closer to 180, 190, but with that fixed range of motion, it really keeps all of that tension on my chest without the need for all of the additional muscles to stabilize. And that's the key here. Stabilization of the free weight compared to a fixed range motion of the lever arms. That feels really good. So with that being said, I can get more weight on and continue to reach muscle failure on the lever gym with even more weight than I could on the barbell using free weight. It's an easier process pushing that weight up, which means that that effort, the perceived work done on the muscles feels much more intense compared to the barbell. So I think I can get even more weight on here and reach that eighth or even ninth, 10th rep of failure with possibly as much as 30, 40% more weight than I would use on the free weight. And check this out. This is the bottom of the rep. If I hit failure here, I'm free to then get up and I'm not caught under the bar. So big benefit, especially when you're training on your own, at home, using heavy weight. Let's get some more weight on here. That was failure, and it's much easier failing on here than with the barbell. Let me show you what I mean. When we're using the bench press with a barbell, we're pressing that weight directly up in a very vertical axis. And then of course that weight through gravity is coming straight down on us. So there's a lot of stress, if you like, placed around the elbows, even the shoulders, as we're having to press that weight up. It's the true weight. The weight that we've got added onto the bar, including the weight of the bar, is really what we're pressing. So 100%. Now, the difference with this compared to the lever gym is that we've got a bit of an arc. And we can kind of imagine that as the arms of the lever machine. And as we press, it comes up in this sort of circular cashew or half moon, and also comes down that same way. Now the benefit of this is because this is a fixed point, all we need to do is press the handles up and actually follow the, the arc in which it goes. This means it's a lot less stress on our elbows 
having to stabilize and support that weight on a vertical axis. A lot of our core stabilizer, a lot of the shoulder muscles come into play. So even though we're lifting more weight, think about the effort, the overall work done by the muscle may actually be less on the chest because we've got these other muscles assisting. With the lever gym, because it's a fixed range motion, means that we're truly loading that weight up, which might only be 65 to maybe at most 75% of the perceived weight that we're lifting, meaning if this is 225 pounds and this is also 225 pounds, these two weights are gonna feel very different on our chest. However, the chest is gonna be much more maximally involved with this range of motion than with a free weight using our stabilizer muscles. So that's one of the main differences. And of course, safety. We've got the safety stop on the lever gym, meaning that we really can train to failure and safely exit from the machine compared to potentially risking injury going on our own on the barbell. And those are big factors when you consider training on your own. When your goal is hypertrophy, strength, muscle, and just general overall health and wellness. So big difference on the lever gym compared to the barbell. And as you can see, gone through our warm up, gone through our barbell, gone through our lever press. So now let's move on and take a look at a couple of combo exercises, decline dumbbell flies, we're gonna pair that with a dumbbell pullover. So we're essentially working on some of the details now after we've hit failure with the heaviest weights that we can lift first. So let's go set up exercises four and five. Now, instead of using dumbbells for our flies, I'm gonna use this, the pec fly attachment, which as you can see, slots into the base of the workbench. Weights go on the end here, Handles there and it allows us to really isolate the chest again following a set range of motion. So, therefore, we're not uh, wasting additional muscles to stabilize the weights of the dumbbell. And we're going to pair this with a dumbbell pullover. Great exercise to lengthen, stretch out the chest, which is something that we need to incorporate into this workout in addition to our presses and our flies. So, uh, let's get some weight on here. Now, one of the main benefits of using an attachment like the pec fly compared to dumbbells comes down to our ability to fail. Not only am I really targeting and isolating the pecs uh, differently than if I was using dumbbells, again, dead weight directly above the chest, and as we move our arms out, puts a lot of strain on our shoulder joint especially. And often when we fail, what do we do? Take the dumbbells too low and then strain to get that weight back up. Because we're using the fixed range motion of the arms here, that weight is never loaded onto my chest. I'm actually not lifting the weight directly up. The weight is moving with the same arc that I'm following. So it's the same weight, same effort on that muscle throughout the full range of motion. And of course, when I fail, I can just put the handles down, not have to worry about dropping the dumbbells or needing a whole range of dumbbells. Plate loaded, so providing I've got a good amount of weights, I can use the same plates for the barbell, the lever gym, 
and the pec fly attachment. Let's finish off on our dumbbell pullover. Now for the cable fly, I like to keep the pulley set to shoulder height. I find that really helps keep the tension where it needs to be on the chest. I like to step forwards, keep the arms out, and then keep the elbows soft so we're not overextending the arms and still mimicking that fly motion. I'm also not overextending my arm. And by that, I mean I'm not taking that cable further back than this midpoint of the body, so I'm not stretching the chest here. Unnecessary, and if you think about flies, what we're really doing is mimicking that of a bird wing, which is really from here to here. So anything from this line back places additional unnecessary stress on both the joints, the connective tissue, and the chest. So stick within that power range. Now we're gonna move on to dips, and I've got these dip attachments that I'm gonna add onto the half rack here. Now, you might be thinking, dips, aren't those to focus on triceps? And technically, yes, but it all comes down to how we perform them. If I show you the two variations, tricep dips, we normally Stay upright, keeping all of that load, the effort on our triceps. But if we tilt forwards at the waist, we transfer some of that effort from the triceps onto our pecs. And I find this is a really nice pairing with something like cable flies and then adding immediately with these dips. So let's get to it. Tilt forwards. And of course, it's not hard to reach failure, supersetting dips from our cable flies. But there's one more movement left. I'm gonna add in some close grip push-ups just to really get that blood pumped into the chest, take me to absolute failure with body weight. And then I think we'll get one or two more circuits and we're done. And that wraps up today's video, the fundamentals of our chest workout. I hope that you found at least part of it useful and allows you to incorporate it into future chest workouts and elevate the efforts, whether it's with barbell free weights or with uh, leverage systems like the Workbench Lever Gym. Again, find more information on all of our social media and you can check the full breakdown of this workout in the description below. Until then, keep training hard, stay healthy, stay happy. I'll see you back here on the next video. Take care.